the key to utilizing our atmospheric gases and our soil elements is the biological gateway in which they become soluble so that a plant can actually take them up and use them in the best form. When we look at the periodic table of elements, we understand that there is 17 essential nutrients that are required for plants to live and function at a minimum. There's a lot of other elements there. Some are essential, a lot are beneficial. But just looking at the bare minimum of what is essential does not do justice to the scope of minerals that are actually used and needed by the plant for all of its functions and the components that it builds in plant primary metabolites and plant secondary metabolites. Elements are simply combined to make molecules. Water, two hydrogen, and an oxygen has a molecular weight of 18. Carbon dioxide, one carbon, two oxygen molecules has a molecular weight of 44. Nitrogen gas, two nitrogen elements, molecular weight 28. Oxygen gas, two oxygen, molecular weight of 32. There is 37,000 tons of nitrogen floating above every acre and almost 10,000 tons of oxygen above every acre. But can your plant use it? Conventional agriculture wants to tell us that it's all about NPK. But honestly, where's the other 97.3% of your plant's dry matter weight coming from? And how do we manage for it? This is an average soil test that came from a national and international lab. And what its purpose is, is to reflect what is technically soluble in a soil. It's not going to tell us everything that's there, but it's going to give us some indication of what is in a soluble form that is plant available. So here's an interesting exercise. Take every mineral on your soil report from your lab and add up the total soluble contents of all of those minerals, all of their amounts, pounds. You have to convert parts per million by two into pounds, but add them all up. And this is an incredibly interesting visual because what you will find is you may have 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000 pounds of total soluble minerals from your lab. Now there's going to be somewhere between two to maybe three million pounds of total mineral in the top six inches per acre, depending on the type of soil you have. So if you've got very sandy soil with larger aggregates, it's not going to weigh as much. But if you've got very fine soils, a lot of clay, it's heavy with a high CEC, you're going to be closer to 3 million pounds per acre. When you take your total soluble minerals of 5,000, 6,000, 8,000, whatever it is, and divide it by 2 to 3 million pounds, what you're going to see is that less than 1% is ever in a soluble state. In fact, it's typically two tenths, three tenths, maybe four tenths of 1% that is ever soluble in your soil. So nature, by its design and creation, holds minerals and nutrients in an insoluble form. And the key is, how do we begin to solubilize or fix those to make them plant available. Here is an actual soil report where we have a total exchange capacity of 8.82. So this is a more sandy soil. Adding up all of the solubility on this report comes to a total of 3,700 
and 45 pounds. There's at least 2 million pounds of topsoil in the first six inches per acre with this light soil. When we divide that out, there is less than two tenths of 1% of the entire mineral content in the top six inches of this soil that is actually in a soluble form. Here is a different soil with a total exchange capacity of 23.81. So this is a heavier soil, more loam and clay, and it will have a heavier weight content. There is a total of 10,647 pounds of soluble nutrients over an estimated 2.5 million pounds of soil in the top six inches. And this one still barely has four tenths of 1% solubility. The purpose for this exercise is to demonstrate that there is very, very little solubility in our soils naturally. They are created that way so we don't lose that to leaching. In addition, what you get back from a lab on a soil mineral solubility test barely represents three and a half percent of your plant's entire dry matter weight. This approach is such a limited view of managing plant fertility and nutrition. By employing so few minerals and believing that they are the major drivers of agricultural plant production, what we find is we need a vast amount of chemicals to support this limited amount of nutrition. Our insecticides, our herbicides, our fungicide uses have continued to rise and rise decade after decade because we've gotten less conscious and less inclusive of everything that it takes to grow a plant. However, when a microorganism looks at the minerals in the soil, it sees a very different number. This is a mineral analysis of a rock taken from the middle of a field in southwestern Montana and sent to a lab for an x-ray spectrometer analysis. And you can see that there's a tremendous amount of mineral in this rock. This type of mineral profile is all accessible by microorganism enzyme activity. Section two summary. Microorganisms are the biological gatekeepers to essential minerals. Microorganisms fix atmospheric elements of carbon, oxygen, and nitrogen. Microbes fix insoluble soil elements, which are 99% or more insoluble. And microbes also fix or reduce the fertilizers so that they can be used by the plant.